Hello and welcome again to Practice Group International. My name is Mr. Hearn and I am your TOEFL tutor. In this video, we're going to talk about scanning versus reading for information in the passage. Now, keep in mind that the TOEFL is a timed test, so everything that we can do to make answering the question faster makes a big difference in our overall score and our confidence. So what we're gonna do is look at the difference between scanning and reading. Now, most people think about scanning when they're looking for a word, they think about scanning as they're looking at the passage and reading it really fast. What happens when you do that is that your brain says, slow down, I don't understand. And this causes anxiety for your brain. And it also wastes a lot of time because you're reading things that you don't need to know. You might not think that you're reading, but if you're looking for a certain word, your brain is actually reading each word and trying to understand each word and trying to understand how those words connect. And so that causes your brain a lot of anxiety. So what we're gonna do that's different, that's fast and accurate is to actually scan for the first three letters of the word you're looking for. Now think about it. We're not reading the words themselves. We're only looking at the letter as a picture. And also, why is this fast and accurate? Well, did you ever look something up on Google or on internet search? How many letters do you have to type in before the search gives you what you're looking for, right? Is it two, three letters? Now, the reason that is, I mean, if we're looking at Google, for example, and you put in three letters and magically they come up with the word you're looking for. So how is that? Is it because Google is psychic, right? Is it the Google psychic network? No. Is it because Google has an algorithm that they know exactly what you're looking for because of what you've looked for previously? No. The reason that you can find what you're looking for within the first three letters four at the max is because if you look in the dictionary, there are a lot of words with the same first letter. Fewer words with the same first two letters, very few words with the same first three letters and almost no words with the same first four letters. So for the TOEFL, we're really only concerned about the first three letters at the most. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our question, look at the topic of the question, and then look at the first three letters of that topic. And then we're gonna to go to the passage. We're gonna use our finger, put your finger on the screen and let your finger go under each word. Why is this important? This is important because you use your finger to limit the amount of information going into your brain. When our brain wants to know something, it's scattering, it's looking all over the place for something. We have to limit by using our finger, we limit how much information goes into our brain and that makes it much faster and less confusing, right? Control, 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 speed comes with control. So let's see how this works. As usual, this practice test comes from ETS's official TOEFL IBT test volume two. These are the people that make the test and it is the trusted source for TOEFL practice. When practicing, always use official ETS TOEFL IBT practice tests. Let's take a look at a question that would give most test takers tremendous anxiety. Number 26, it's a long, complicated question. And we have a combination of two paragraphs that one would think they must read everything. So at first glance, this question would cause a tremendous amount of anxiety because there's so much to read. You would think this is gonna take forever. I'll never be able to answer this question. I'm gonna to have to take this test again. A lot of things go through our mind when we see a question like this, but is it necessarily true that you have to read that much? Let's take a look at scanning versus reading. In the question, we identify the question as a detailed question. What evidence supports? This word supports is giving us a strong indication that this is a detailed question. But what is the question asking about? The claim that the intensity of nestling baking calls is a good indicator of 
which offspring in a nest would most benefit from a feeding? What is this really about? What word will we look for? Because we see intensity of nestling, begging calls, good indicator of this W word, which, that's the indication that that's what this question is about. Which offspring in the nest would most benefit from a feeding? So this is the part of the question we want to concentrate on. Which offspring in a nest would most benefit from a feeding? But what word in this sentence are we looking for? The object of the sentence is, would they benefit from a feeding? So benefit from a feeding. That's what it's about. Now, from there, what word is it really about? It's about the feeding. That's what they want to know. Who benefits from a feeding? So now I want to look at the first three letters of the word feeding. So if I go to the beginning of my passage up here, and remember, put your finger on the screen so that you can control how much information comes into your brain. We're looking for a word that begins with F-E-E. -E. Immediately I find F-O, F-O, and I find benefit, but I'm not looking for benefit. I'm looking for feeding. So I have here, keep going on and on and on. I don't see feeding. I'm going on and on. Oh, there's an F-O that is not feeding. F-O, not feeding. And keep on. Oh, there's F-E, but it's fed, not feeding. Then continue on. And continue on. Oh, there's F-O again. No feeding. And fed, not feeding and fed, not feeding, parent birds, food, not feeding, and continuing on, food, not feeding, and continuing on, there's four again, ah, feeding, the word feeding. Now I have my sentence. I found my sentence because I found my keyword. So now I've found my sentence that has the word feeding, that's what I'm looking for. And I read my sentence. Indeed, if you take the baby tree swallows out of the nest for an hour, feeding half the set and starving the other half. Where is the answer to my question? When the birds are replaced in the nest, the starved youngsters beg more loudly than the fed birds and the parents feed the active beggars more than those who beg less vigorously. So we're talking about intensity of nestling begging calls. And here we're talking about begging more loudly than the fed birds. So this sentence is answering my question. And what does it say? It says that the parents feed the active beggars more than those who beg less. Let's take a look at our choices. Now that you know, you've found your right sentence. Notice that we didn't have to read everything. We only found our word, read the sentence that contains that word, and then look for the information that actually answers the question. And we couldn't care less about the rest. So A says, when replaced in a nest with hungry robins, well-fed robins did not beg for food. Is that true? No, it says that the parent birds fed the active beggars more than those less vigorously. So that's wrong. Among B, B states among robin nestlings, the intensity of begging decreased the more the nestlings were fed. Does it say that? It says no. It says that the parents birds fed the active beggars more than those with less vigorously. So that is wrong. How about C, hungry tree swallow nestlings begging louder than well-fed nestlings in the same nest. Hungry tree swallow nestlings beg louder. Well, is that what it says? Starved youngsters beg more loudly than the fed birds. That's possible. C is possible. I don't know if it's correct, but I know that it's possible because it's similar to what it states in the passage. How about D, Hungry tree swallow nestlings continue to beg loudly until they were fed, whereas well-fed nestlings soon stopped begging. Is that what our sentence says? No, it says that the starved youngsters beg more loudly than the fed birds and parent birds feed the active beggars 
more than those who beg less vigorously. So it's not about, there's nowhere where it says that the Fed, uh, the well-fed nestling soon stop begging. So D is not possible, making C our answer. Is this correct? Let's find out. We're looking at question number 26. Question number 26 says that C is the correct answer, which magically is the correct answer. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope that this little skill helps you. Please develop this skill. Remember, use your finger, put it along the bottom of the words to help guide you and to limit the amount of information going into your brain. Get good at finding out what is our question asking about. Look at that word. What are the first three letters of that word? And then scan, not read. Scan for those letters to find the word you're looking for. Once you've found the word you're looking for, you can read that sentence. Now, there's one more caveat to this. There may be more than one instance of that word in the passage. What do you do then? What if that word is in the passage two or three times? You're going to look at the sentence that contains that word and say, does this sentence relate to my question? If that sentence in the passage does not relate directly to your question, it is not the sentence you're looking for. So you'll abandon that one and go to the other sentence that has that same word. Okay, that's all for this video. Please, if you haven't already, like, share, ring the bell, subscribe. Please uh, share this with other people. Come on. If you share this with other people and help them, it makes a better world for all of us. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.